All right, from sometime in the late 70s, 78 maybe, here's a Kodak instant film camera competing with Polaroids, who eventually sued him out of business there. The EK6, this was the second version, Eastman Kodak 6. EK4 was a little different. And I'm not going to look too much at this. I seriously doubt that any of it will work, but we got our instruction manual. And we have a box of film with it that I'm not sure is the right one. There's a little thing in the box of film that says PR10. This has a slightly different number on it. That's what was with it. One of them has a thing of film in it. And one of them is empty. But kept the dark side. That might be important. So, and we have the original flash bar that fit in the top. And I also have an accessory flash bar that fit in the top. So let's take a look at some of this stuff because the most important thing, I think, is not this item here, but is all the documentation a lady named Opal kept as Kodak went out of the instant print business. She kept everything. It's going to be fun to look at that. I like ephemera more than I like actual items, as longtime viewers of my channel will note. All right, removing it from the box, which really doesn't have anything on it, we have the uh, owner's manual not dated. And pause your screen and look at this. See some of the bits and pieces of the camera. The basic operating instructions. I did actually go out and buy two J batteries to try it out. What the heck, if it doesn't work I can use them for something else. I didn't buy any new film. I'll work with what I found in here, although I doubt it's the right kind. And expiring in the 80s, as this box says, it won't be any good anyway. Well, it looks almost like Polaroid Spectra film. It's not square as the Polaroid instant film from the late 70s was, but it's more Polaroid spectra size, more rectangular than square. And it shows how to put the J batteries in. And apparently it had a little spot, it must have come with a little card with some little sticky monogram things, alphabet things, but they were not in here, so no monogram on this one. Putting in the batteries. Loading the camera, the exposure counter, focusing, viewfinder, flash pictures. I have one little thing, it looks like it has two flashes left on it, and I have the accessory IT&T magic flash. We'll try these. If we can get anything to work, we'll try them. And loading the camera. Print control. Focus. Tips for better pictures. I've read about some of this stuff on the internet, and some people think that the actual Kodak quality of prints was very good. It's just that they infringed on Polaroid's methods. Now the Kodak does not have a battery in the film pack the way the Polaroid's did. That's why you need batteries in the camera itself. You notice there's something cut off here at the bottom. That might be Something she had to cut out to send in for a rebate or something. So here's the camera itself. There's the distance feature that moves the focus ring in feet or meters. Infinity, what, 
6 to 12 feet did it say? 4 to 6 feet. Your print control, light or dark. Your viewfinder on the back side there. Your number of exposures left would be up there. Loading the film here and the two J batteries there. Shutter control. Battery test button here. That's where you would have put your monogram stickers. Or maybe that's the print count left there. It's got what feels like real leather there. It feels sturdy. And there's where your print ejects at. So Polaroid sued Kodak and won. And Kodak was forced to stop making their instant cameras and film. And Opal saved all of her notices that she received. And pause your screen and read this totally boring legalese stuff if you're so inclined. And she saved all of her letters too. Notifying her of the class action settlement. Unfortunately for Opal, the settlement got stopped by another judge who said it wasn't enough. So Opal was once again out of luck. Looks like she mailed something in on 88. There was obviously something attached here and torn in for her to mail in. We're sorry the Kodak Instant Camera Exchange Program has been enjoined, stopped, in parentheses, if you don't know what enjoined is, by the court. No need to contact us again. Well, that's not a good sign. Called 215.86 from Opal. She complained that she couldn't reach their 800 number. And they reply back that she's got a long time yet. And here's that letter she wrote. She must have made a photocopy of it. It's very hard to read. Like a photocopy of a pencil thing. Eastman Kodak. And I am very sorry that you cannot, can no longer supply Kodak instant color film. I have been trying to call your 800 number for days with no success. I have a Kodak EK6 instant camera and I wish to exchange it for one share of Kodak stock. You know, Opal, I'm not sure that would have been any bigger. Please advise as to where I may ship my camera so that I may receive the stock. Thank you very much, Opal, blah, blah, blah. And that was one of the things that the, Op the Kodak settlement let people do. Opal kept the cutout from the Indianapolis Star, where it says the uh, company would give camera owners three options. They can exchange their cameras for Kodak's newest disc camera and two film cartridges. They can exchange the camera for a coupon book with $50 worth of rebates on Kodak photographic products or they can turn their cameras in and get one share of Kodak stock. A toll-free 24-hour phone number for consumers is blah, blah, blah. So, Opal selected the share of stock. And I see this film cost $15 at Target back in the day. But the Kodak exchange was halted. It's been hit with another court order that freezes its refund program for the obsolete cameras. A Chicago judge ordered Kodak to stop refunds until a lawsuit can be heard char charging Kodak with not offering enough compensation to owners. Hmm. So Opal ended up being out of luck, I guess. She, uh, couldn't she? I've got the cameras. 
So she obviously didn't ship it back. Although maybe in lieu of shipping the camera back, they had them cut out something from the bottom of the owner's manual. I don't know. That's a possibility too. Rather than ship the whole camera back, they might have decided to do that. So Opal was out of luck, but I think it's very interesting that Opal kept all of her paperwork. That's what I would do too. All right, look at the little pictogram. Insert two J batteries. Angled side first with a notch at the end toward the opposite end. It seems easy enough. I have two new batteries. I splurged. I think I paid six dollars for this pack of two. So notch first and angled first and notched toward this little part here. Whoa, good heavens. Something happened. test. Yep. Battery test is good. Okay. All right, try to put a film cartridge in. Well, no dark slides shot out. Okay, batteries are good. The film cartridge in it with a dark slide. Guess we won't desperately try and take a picture of anything directly. I think there's just a dark slide in that one. Maybe it'll come out. What do you know? It did eject a dark slide. Good job. But when we do a pack of film, battery still tests good. doesn't work. The batteries are like SD cards. You push them in a little and they pop out. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to put that dark slide back in one of the containers and see if that will clear it. dark slide back in there. I don't know if this will work or not. Let's see. Gotta go to this colored line toward that colored spot there. And that's not rejecting the dark slide. Well, I ended up taking the two J batteries out. Those are new and it's just using them up. It would not turn off. Uh, it wasn't going to eject anything else either. So, had one little piece of life left in it, shooting out a dark slide, and that was it. Well, we tried. All we got out was one dark slide, but at least we did get to see that from the Kodak EK6 instant film camera from about 1977, I think, maybe 1978, somewhere in there such as it is. Pretty useless these days. 
I'm sure there are ways you can fiddle around with Fujifilm and things and cut them up and stick them in there, but that's a lot of work and some expense and buying old film is very expensive and it's not going to work. It all expired in the early 80s. But anyway, hope you enjoyed seeing this whole thing. Thanks for watching. Bye.